Howdy, and welcome back to Go Funny Dance Man. Go, go, man, go funny dance. I'm your host, an unfunny man who isn't dancing. Anime. A wonderful and highly influential art form that is always creating cultural phenomena. Think Neon Genesis, Dragon Ball Z, Cowboy Bebop, Attack on Titan, Sailor Moon, One Piece, Pokemon, Akira, Spirited Away, and so on. These are pieces of work that have heavily impacted entire generations, and have been used as inspiration for many other things. Including meme culture. Yep, that's where this is going. Many classic memes have come straight from anime, and Super Crooks is no exception. Yes, at some point in mid to late 2022, the intro to this show was injected into meme culture for a very short while. And now, half a year later, I'm making a video about it. The, the show, not the memes. Super Crooks is a superhero anime that was released in November of 2021. Based on a limited run comic series of the same name, Super Crooks is about super crooks. They're folks who use their powers to steal stuff for money. No ruling the world or mass destruction here. It had a 13 episode run, with a live action adaptation of the comics supposedly on its way as well. But who knows if that'll ever happen because Hmm. Anyway. Alert! Alert! Anytime I talk about the cast or vocal performances, I will be talking about the English dubbing. I know that it can be a very iffy thing, but I, I like to be critical when I watch things, and I only feel slightly okay with talking about English voice actors in an opinionated way, so... I know the original is always the way to go, and those casts are super fucking talented, but I like the surprise of hearing a really good dubbing. Plus, I often recognize the voices from like other anime, video games, cartoons, so that's an added bonus. I'll never really hold a bad dubbing against a show, but luckily I don't have to do that here. Cam Clark, Bill Rogers, Doug Stone, Abby Trot, who uh, voices this Demon Slayer character, um, but more importantly, uh, she did the vocals for Life Light from Smash Ultimate, which is fucking iconic. And don't think I'm forgetting my guy Jonas Scott, okay? Not a fucking chance. It held up well in the dubbing department, aside from some dialogue pacing issues. But the real question is, what about the rest of the show? Hold up. I feel like I should talk about something first. This show is a Netflix original anime, which is a live a title because usually Netflix just buys the rights to the shows and not actually develops them in-house, but I, I still feel like these shows aren't like talked about as being incredible. Like, I've seen a lot of people talk about like Gretzuko, Crybaby, Violet Evergarden, Beastars a little bit, and uh, surprisingly Doro Hidoro. But other than that, like, I, I just don't see this cropping up in any conversations, you know? This is more of a, hey, are these shows okay? Uh, just so I don't have to feel dumb for liking some of them. But back to Super Crooks. What are we, like three minutes into the video? There's something very important with the episodes here. So I'm going to talk about the first one in pretty good detail before I give my thoughts on the plot as a whole. Now, if you're like I was, you might have actually seen something from the show, aside from the intro. And that would be from episode one, Electro Boy. It begins with superhero Stan Johnny as he discovers his brand new electric-based superpowers. He tells his friend Tom about it, and they become dead set on the idea of becoming a superhero. Now, what does he do with his new power first? Well, he almost causes a car accident and blows up a dickhead's boombox. You see where this is going. He decides on a moniker, Electro Boy, and Tom helps him design an outfit to go along with it. They do some training, and Johnny even learns how to fly. After literally one day with this new identity, they decide it's time to unveil Electro Boy and show off how cool he is. At a public pool. That might just end poorly. Electro Boy? Oh, and it's in front of the girl he likes, too. He flies directly over the pool, and for some reason this bully character is like, Whoa, a flying guy? Oh wait, that's just a guy I don't like. What a loser. Flying in the sky. This breaks Johnny's confidence as he falls into the pool, electrocuting all of them. And not just that, the panic that ensues from the bystanders rushing onto the street causes a car to crash into a restaurant, a semi to crash into a church with a choir inside, 
and a pig hauler to crash into a gas station, which then explodes and sends the truck into the pool, releasing all of the pigs into the electrified waters. Hey, remember when I said that it might end poorly? I think we're a bit past that now. In the aftermath, when Johnny is upset and vulnerable, he finds out that superpowers aren't just used by good guys. And that's the first episode. It's Johnny Bolt's origin story, and it's really good. This episode is crazy how just immediate it goes to shit. But the seeds are planted there the whole time. His priorities are all out of whack from the instant he gets his powers. It's super memorable, and it stands out as one of the most entertaining episodes of an anime that I've personally ever watched. And then there's the rest of the series. It is entirely different from the first episode, from almost every perspective. First off, we just watched a selfish, irresponsible, impatient, dumbass kid murder like a hundred people, and then he's just the good guy for the rest of the series. But for the rest of the series, he's almost a completely different character than the one we see in episode 1. In the series, he's non-lethal and very critical of the superheroes who are reckless and endanger people, even stating that the one rule that they have is to not kill people. But at the end of the first episode, he's all, I'm a supervillain, I just killed all those people and now I'm gonna steal money. But like, that character is gone for the rest of the series, so what was the point of episode 1? Again, I love it, it's a great episode, but why? Also, the superheroes aren't really set up to be bad guys in that episode, or for the rest of the series for that matter. They're always the ones that like break stuff and hurt people, but it isn't addressed head on. Number 3. None of the details from that first episode really matter in any meaningful way. Like, the, the characters don't, Johnny's actions don't, and they even tease the fact that Johnny's dad, who he had never met, is supposedly like a superhero or, or villain, but that doesn't come up ever again. As for the rest of the story, it's told in such an odd format. The first episode is a prologue, then the next eight and a half episodes are about a heist that doesn't work. And then there's the last few episodes where they do an even bigger heist five years later that does work. That final heist is what they took from that comic run, so essentially it's a prologue to a prologue to a main story. But it's paced so awkwardly with that five year time skip being extra messy. For example, you have this character the Praetorian, who right before the time skip is being heralded as this really incredible and just hero. A and then very quickly, with little to no payoff or satisfaction, they're just like, ah man, he's corrupt now. Now people don't like him. Speaking of messy, this show really tries to cram in as many things as it can. You've got action, heist, social commentary, romance, good and evil reversal, gore fest, superpowers, and even some mafia-esque undertones? It felt unfocused. The second heist is pretty fun to watch, but the first one just has way too much setup for how little payoff there actually is. I need a whole section to just talk about the characters. First and foremost, it's a superhero show. Why are these heroes and villains so... boring? You've got the ghost, who has ghost powers. Freeze, who can freeze stuff. Rubber Ball, who turns into a ball. Man Mountain, who is a big man. Most of the villains we follow don't have villain identities either. It's just Casey and TK and Roddy. The Union of Justice heroes, which are from like a separate comic run, are also really boring. This one can fly and is super strong. This one can fly and is super strong. This one is super quick. The Praetorian is, on paper, a really cool character. Because the way that he's power capped to not be perfect is that his powers are random. But that is bullshit. I know that it's a story, so the writers are gonna pick like really cool flashy powers to use, but in every single scenario he gets the perfect power. Fighting an ice guy? Fire breath. How about a bad luck aura man? Oh? Reflection powers. Need to get somewhere underground really quick? Ah, perfect. Teleportation. It takes what could have been an interesting character and just throws it out the window. And Johnny Bolt. Oh boy, he is not a good main character. He has no real motivation other than his girlfriend, who he consistently goes against and abandons the entire time. She waits years for him to get out of prison, 
and then he immediately goes and robs some jewelry stores. He leaves her at the altar later on, gets locked up again, and then just expects everything to be fine after five years. He doesn't learn anything in the end either. After fucking up robberies over and over, with Casey telling him that he just has to try to make an honest living, he finally gets one big score, and I guess that just solves all of Casey's problems with him. He doesn't have any interesting moments in the show either, because he never uses his powers in interesting ways. I mean, most of the time he just uses it to light cigs. What else? The music is awesome. I really do love the soundtrack, but the opening theme just doesn't hit well for me. I love the animation they did for it. It's, it's really silly, but God, the song just doesn't get me excited for the show, you know? Ellie Goulding's lights should not fit better than the official theme. Editing isn't normally something I think to talk about, but there were moments in the show where I definitely saw some dips in quality. Specifically early on, right before an episode ended, Johnny and his boys commit crimes, and the police are freaking out about it. From their perspective, we're shown a list of heroes that they're trying to call in for help, and then this really quick bar graph that shows that there are way more heroes than villains pops up before cutting to black, which is so random here because it doesn't add anything to the next episode. There's that and the part where Johnny's reading his old like Electro Boy journal, but that doesn't add anything to the scene. It talks about how he's going to be a great superhero and loved by everyone, but it's just cut in between him hiring people for a heist. The animation is fine, I guess. A lot of the fights are stale, and the CG that they use for things like these buildings, uh, it isn't that good. Still better than Invincibles. The designs are where I feel like I can really rip into things, except that most of them are pretty bland. Which is where I think I'm gonna transition into my final thoughts. It's fine. The show really doesn't do anything special. It can't even take the number one spot for Netflix original heist anime. But I don't hate it. It was just average. Bland. It didn't really know what to lean into. The bad hero aspect was always kind of there, but it didn't get enough focus. Hey, the heist stuff was pretty okay. But again, the first one was anticlimactic. Not in the fact that they lost, it was just in the way that it was done. The characters are forgettable, and it takes this quick, easy story and adds eight extra episodes that are just barely necessary for you to not be able to skip them. If you want to watch a more gritty, bloody take on superhumans, just watch The Boys Are Invincible. Five plus. Adios.